so I just got a box of very cool stuff from Retrobit. Now, Retrobit is well known for their third-party products, all the way from controllers to peripherals to consoles that you can play all your retro favorites. Retrobit has been making them, and they were kind enough to send me some items to try out. We have the Super Retro Advance Adapter, which allows you to play GBA games on your SNES, and we're excited to try that one out. Retro Gen Adapter, which allows you to play your Genesis games on your Super Nintendo. We have the Wired Super Retro Controller Duo, because it comes with two controllers. And finally, the Retro Duo Portable V2.0. So let's start with a look at the main item, the Retro Duo Portable. Duo because it can play both Super Nintendo titles as well as NES titles with the use of an adapter that comes packaged with the system. The box comes with the system, power cord, AV jack, clear stand, and NES adapter. On its own, it primarily is a handheld Super Nintendo. The 2 inch by 2 and 3 quarter inch LCD screen is actually very clear and reminds me a lot of the GBA screen. It displays the images as decently as you can get on this small LCD screen. The high quality screen is a bonus here for a system of this price. And if you're not so keen with playing your games on the small screen, or if your friends want to get in on the action, then it displays even better when connected to a CRT television. In fact, the resolution is quite clear and not distorted at all, giving you an authentic retro feel when you play. The system itself is also very nice. I actually really like this rubbery, plasticky feel of the handheld as it doesn't feel slick, like it's gonna fly out of my hand at any moment. It gives the system a bit of a grip. The games slide right into the top and stick firm. Although, don't get too excited with your gameplay as there is a tad of a bit of a wiggling of the cart. I wouldn't be too concerned about this if it didn't worry me that something might come loose eventually. And one of the bonuses about this console is that you don't need an adapter to play Japanese Super Famicom games. They fit right in, although they do still suffer from the shaking problem a little bit more than the US carts do. But hey, it plays imports! The NES adapter that comes with the unit allows it to play 8-bit titles with relative ease, if not for being a little bit awkward. The adapter sticks out like a sore thumb and really experiences problems with that wobbliness of the carts, more so than the Super Nintendo and Famicom games do. In fact, there's a screw that is provided to stabilize the cart. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a big fan of this. Yes, it stops the adapter from wiggling, but if you're using it as a portable unit, you're gonna have to either fasten it in the back before you go, which makes it hard to carry around with you, except in a backpack, or take a screwdriver with you should you want to attach it or even take it off and play something different like a Super Nintendo game. As for battery life, it boasts 8 hours of gameplay, so of course I took that as a challenge. On a full charge with the Super Nintendo game Star Fox plugged in, I was only able to get 5 hours out of it. But then I tried a game that didn't have the extra chips that drained power from the system, like F-Zero up for the Super Famicom doesn't have, and actually got almost 7 hours and 15 minutes out of it. Using the Nintendo cartridge adapter and Golgo 13 got me six and a half hours of life. The GBA adapter with Pokemon Ruby and the Genesis adapter with Sonic the Hedgehog got me five and one third and six and a half hours apiece. As for the Super Game Boy, I tried to play it, but it kept glitching on me. I can't tell if it was the system or what, but sometimes it wanted to work for a short time, and then other times it didn't even read the cart inserted. So while not the eight hours that it promised, it is still one of the longest that I have ever encountered for a portable console of this nature. And that's more than enough time to play your game on a flight, or even have it ready when you're at the flea market. But now, let's get really thorough. I've inserted a Honeybee adapter into this Nintendo adapter. Let's try out some Famicom games and see how they work with this NES adapter. And as you can see, all the Famicom games that I tried out 
actually worked. So now let's get a little bit more creative. How about a Famicom peripheral, like the Daytac Joint ROM System card scanner? As you can see here, it boots right up. Well, now let's try some of the Super Nintendo adapters, like the Super Famicom Disk Doctor. Once again, boots right up and ready to play. Now, these tests are pretty impractical, and they look fairly ridiculous on this tiny little system, but they really show how the Retro Duo Portable is well-rounded and is really a workhorse. It emulates all the games very well, and it's exciting to see something that does so much. But what about durability? Well, honestly, it's pretty durable without a game inside of it, but with a game in, you're just asking for trouble if you give it to a small child, uh, if they drop it or something. Or hooking it up to your TV on a tall table and then accidentally pulling on the cords if it's hooked up to the TV. Basically, you might get a few chances, but I really wouldn't push it. Best to keep it on the floor and in adult hands. Next up, let's take a look at the two retro controllers for the Super Retro Controller Duo. The placement of the directional pad and the buttons perfectly match those of a regular Super Nintendo controller. The pad thickness is the same as the original controller towards the back, but it differs as you get closer to the front where it becomes thicker and more ergonomic. The X and Y buttons are concave, just like the US controllers, making them feel more nostalgic. I actually really like the feel of these controllers. They're very lightweight, which can be a little off-putting. I didn't think that I would like them, but they are very comfortable. The angles here at the ends allow for a much better feel against the palms of your hands. As for how the controllers respond, well, they're spot on. There's no lag and they don't feel stiff. The buttons are very smooth. In fact, they feel just like the original controllers. Even the bumpers are comfortable. And I love the way that they use the Super Famicom controller colors on the buttons. And there's a nice long cord to keep your eyeballs safe from your TV. There's really nothing like playing a game on the original console with the original controllers, but should you need new controllers and you're on a shoestring budget, these are easily the best that you can find. Next up, we have the first of the two adapters that I have, the Game Boy Advance adapter. And I hate to say it, but this boxing is very misleading. You would think that you would be able to play your GBA games on your SNES, uh, much like you'd be able to on the Super Game Boy, allowing you to play Game Boy games on your SNES, but you cannot. This adapter merely uses the SNES as a power source. To actually play the GBA games, you need to use the AV cables that come with this adapter and swap them with your SNES cables that lead to your TV. And the only way to play the games without plugging the AV cables for this is on the Retro Duo Portable. So really, this adapter was made with the Retro Duo Portable in mind. So it's a bit misleading. Okay, a lot misleading. Okay, a whole lot misleading. And that's really my biggest gripe here. I know it may seem like a little thing to a lot of people, but it's not. You cannot play your GBA games on your Super Nintendo with this adapter. And to say otherwise is not right. Now then, having ranted about that and said my piece, this adapter was really made to play GBA games on the Retro Duo Portable. So let's look at it from that aspect. The system is actually about as big as the GBA itself. So hooking it up to the Retro Duo Portable just makes it that much more clunky as a handheld. It works well, and the graphics from the Retro Duo screen look really very good. So actually, while impractical, the GBA adapter is a very accurate emulator and plays very well on the Retro Duo Portable 2.0 screen as well as on the CRT screen. However, having said that, the price is a bit much for something like this. Your best bet is to save up and just get a GBA. And finally, there's the Genesis adapter, the RetroGen. Once again, this is an adapter in name only, as the SNES is only used as a power source. The emulator is actually in the adapter itself. You cannot play Genesis games on your SNES. But 
just like the other one, you can play it on your Retro Duo Portable 2.0. Otherwise, it plays Genesis games very well on both the Retro Duo and on your TV. And even if you hook it up to a Super Nintendo, to tell you the truth, I did have problems with the built-in screen of the Retro Duo Portable a few times, as the game just seemed to be fuzzy for me. But when I hooked it up to a TV, the images came out crystal clear. There's a button on the side that allows you to switch to different regions, allowing you to play any regional game. And this makes it a very useful tool for us importers. And this is where I recommend this adapter wholeheartedly. Even though you do need AV cables to play it on your regular Super Nintendo, this allows you to play games from any region with a click of a button here on the side. This alone makes me very happy. It's four Genesis's. Genesis, Genesi? Genesis? Genesis's in one brick. And it's small too. I tried 20 games of each kind for the Retro Duo portable system and its various adapters, and I must say that I am quite pleased with how it performed. When it comes down to down, the Retro Duo Portable is an extremely good system for its price. It's strong, it feels good in your hands, and it plays the games it emulates with a great deal of accuracy. As a portable gaming system, it's pretty good. As a portable gaming console, it's even better. If you're without a Super Nintendo, then the display output will not disappoint you. Make sure that you also purchase the Super Retro controllers as they are amazing for their price and unlike any other third party controller out there. Small and lightweight at only two pounds, the Retro Dual Portable has a nice long battery life and is ideal for taking on the go for testing out games or just when you're in a hotel at a convention and you want something to play. As for the adapters, they work very well in the Retro Duo Portable without using the AV cables. In a Super Nintendo, they work very well, but you do need to take out the AV cables from the Super Nintendo and swap them with the ones that hook directly to the adapter. And while the audio is not the most accurate through the built-in speakers of the Retro Duo Portable 2.0, the system is well worth your money. Great for travel and for testing games. If you're looking for a portable Super Nintendo that you can rely on, I would highly recommend this.